guys, what's going on? Welcome back to a brand new top five video. Today I'm going to be going over my top five favorite films that have ever premiered at Sundance. Now this is a very hard list because there's a lot of amazing films that premiered at Sundance, but I decided the ones that hit me the hardest and the ones that I haven't really talked about on this channel or maybe just ones that I want to talk about a little bit more over here. Now of course this is in part with the Movies Nerds Club, which is, has Rachel's Reviews, Ryan Cam, Elsie's Screen Talk, mainly movies, and Ren Geekness. You know him over from the podcast that I do with him. Make sure to go check out all their links down below as well as the videos that they are putting out for their top five videos it's gonna be a blast guys so without further ado hit that like and subscribe button comment down below your favorites and let's get to it Coming down to my number five is going to be Wind River. This is a movie that completely took me by storm years ago when I went to go see it in the theaters for the very first time. Jeremy Renner is excellent in the role. Elizabeth Olsen is fantastic. And this mystery crime drama completely keeps you enamored the entire runtime. It's a beautiful looking movie. And Taylor Sheridan, my God, this guy just continues to impress me. It's a movie that continuously sticks inside my head head and anytime someone needs a recommendation for a brand new crime drama this is the movie i give them coming down at my number four is one of the most heartbreaking most heart shattering films i've ever watched and that is Fruitvale Station. This is the first film written and directed by Ryan Coogler and stars the likes of Michael B. Jordan. Really much the first thing for me to ever see Michael B. Jordan in, and as well the first thing that I ever saw Ryan Coogler in. This is the first film that I ever saw both Michael B. Jordan and also Ryan Coogler directing and writing in, and I was completely taken by storm. I didn't know the true story on this. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, and by the end, I was a complete sobbing mess. Go into this film not knowing much about anything of it all, but just knowing you are truly in for a giant experience and one that completely proves why where and why Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan are, are in their respective careers right now. Coming down at my number three is going to be The Farewell, the film that got completely snubbed by the Oscars last year. Like, my God, completely snubbed. Aquafina was one of the best performances of that entire year and Lulu Wang's directing was completely incredible this is a movie that completely just shatters my heart again and gives me that expectations if you're someone that loves your grandparents so much or has that close relationship with you are going to feel a lot of emotion while watching the farewell especially as the story all progresses about one girl coming back to her home city with her family and finding out that her beloved grandmother is dying but her grandmother does not know that because in their culture they do not let them know until they are right on death's bed it is a very fascinating one that brings you into a culture that you have never been invested in or maybe if you are maybe it brings a little bit of that harsh memories back but it's one that I completely felt like I was a part of this family and it's one that has completely been stuck inside my brain ever since I saw it and at my number two we have Palm Springs the, the big debut Sundance film from last year now while there is one more Sundance film from last year that I wanted to include in this it will be my honorable mentions that I mentioned in a second I wanted to mention Palm Springs because the film is out it's out at Hulu you can go and watch it this is one of my favorite films of last year. The take on Groundhog Day here is actually more unique than I think it ever could have been, respectfully should have been. The way that it handles the mundane, the things in life that we really much go about in, and the little things that we should very much appreciate. I love its perspective on life and how we should really not take it for granted. And the performances from Andy Samberg and Christina Milioti are absolutely stupendous and they are two of my favorite performances from last year in general especially Miliotti, who i just think absolutely kills and i hope now she officially starts to blow up in her career because she is one of the best actresses working today whether it's comedic or more of comedic slash drama she just nails it palm springs is a funny entertaining ride that actually has a lot more to say under the surface my number one favorite sundance film ever premiered there is the big sick a film that has tears in my eyes makes Makes me laugh and this romantic comedy was everything I could want and more the real life love story between Emily Gordon and Kumal Nanjiani who now Kumal Nanjiani is just kind of like gone up into the raptures of stardom I'm so happy for him and Emily's writing a bunch of cool films as well that I'm really much looking forward to too this is just a movie that I did not know what to expect going into, but I saw the reviews. I saw it was finally in my town, and I went to go and see it, and I just sat there, the only one in theaters, with tears in my eyes, 
laughter coming out of me consistently and just feeling like it was such a relatable time. And it's one of those movies that just warms your heart up in every sense of the way. This guy fell in love with the girl of his dreams through a coma. It, it's just brilliant. I, I love this movie to death. In fact, out of all these movies, that film is actually one of my favorite films of all time. First, before we get going, guys, I do have some honorable mentions. And this was, again, tough because I wanted to keep it a little bit more seamless. And I know Sundance has so many brilliant films. But the ones that when I was looking out stuck out to me was Reservoir Dogs, Get Out, which I did not know Get Out premiered there, Ingrid Goes West, Whiplash, Napoleon Dynamite, and Nine Days, which again, Nine Days is the one that I saw last year. It was my second favorite film of 2020, and I didn't put it in this list, and again, just because the film is not out yet, but when you guys all get to see it, you guys are going to be blown away just as much as I was all those films, go give them some love, guys. They all deserve it. Thank you so much to the Movie Nerds Club for having me join again. This was such a blast. I love being able to finally do this with them. My schedule's finally not tied down, but I hope you guys go check out their top five films from Sundance Film Festivals, which ones they premiered. Look out for a bunch of Sundance coverage coming up in the next couple of days, weeks, and even months. I have a bunch of written reviews, but I have a lot more to catch up on. But of course, guys, until next time, stay classy, hit that like and subscribe button, and of course, it's a big thing to you and a big thing to my Patreon supporters, because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. Thank you.